Hello everyone, I am here to Space to Win and welcome to a very special... What? Oh, you mean this? I thought just for the occasion, seeing that was a special review, if you recognise the character, good for you. If you don't, you will soon enough, because this is the Dot .hack timeline review. From AI Buster to Dot .hack GU+, let me show you the stories going on inside the world and the people they involve. For anyone who's a bit confused about what Dot .hack is, let me fill you in. Dot .hack is a multimedia franchise whose stories are all based around a game called The World. The world, created by German programmer Harold Horwick and maintained by the CC Corporation, is basically the World of Warcraft of the future, an MMORPG which not only has an extensive world for exploration, but also uses virtual reality headsets and controllers to put the players right into the middle of the game. Because that's what we need, isn't it? An addictive game making players even less connected to reality. Top notch. The game itself is pretty much what you might expect. Players start in places called root towns where they can conduct business and contact other players to socialise. By using things called chaos gates, players can travel to different fields where they can fight monsters, explore dungeons and collect treasure. But of course, its stories are not on the actual game itself, but the people who play the game and the anomalies they encounter while doing so. The players take it upon themselves to learn more about these anomalies, solve the mystery behind them, and in some of the more serious cases, try to stop them altogether. The anomalies in question, whichever title you may read, can usually be categorised into one of a few things. Mysterious AI. Whether these are NPCs or monsters never seen anywhere else, they possess abilities which break the rules of the world and in other cases would technically be illegal. The legendary item of the world. Sometimes known as a key and in other places is thought to be simply a myth or rumour created on the internet. The person who finds this item is said to be able to bypass the restrictions of the system and change it, for better or worse. And the most frightening of rumours are of people who when playing the game have slipped into comas. Most consider this exhaustion from overplaying, but when the patterns in their attacks begin to emerge and the coma victim begins to increase, there seems to be more to this than meets the eye. As the players confront these anomalies, they learn more from their experience about the world itself and more about themselves, which they usually apply to their real lives, which makes them better people. Now that you have an idea of what to expect, the question is, where to begin? When I said Dot .hack is a multimedia franchise, it's certainly no understatement. Whether you prefer to read, watch or play the story out, there's a Dot .hack title which will appease any anime and manga fan's preference, and there's a lot to choose from, believe me. While the timeline is not a confused mess like the Zelda series, I think anyone wishing to get into the franchise might be deterred at the amount of titles thrown at them and not sure where to begin. That's where I come in. In the course of the review, I'm going to put the titles in chronological order, give a brief summary of the story, my opinion of course, and a rating of it out of 5 stars. I uh, thought 10 might be a bit too much for this review. If you're sitting comfortably, let's take a look at the changing history of .hack. The first titles we're looking at are from the first generation of the timeline, labelled simply Project .hack by the creators. First up is AI Busters, a one-shot novel who follows the story of Alberio, a solo player, and Akuto, a female newbie, as they try to help a strange AI girl whose data appears to be broken. This story sets the foreboding for the later series, a uh, car before the storm so to speak. Probably more than any other title, it talks about the earliest history of the game its creators, the inspiration that went behind the game itself, and there's even a mention of the world's beta version called Fragment. This title also tells the highlight story event, which made soon to be recurring characters Balmon, Mung and Orca the famous characters they will soon be, and that's an added bonus for fans already. In short, while the title's cheap and short, not much of real consequence happens and it merely adds backstory for fans for the series. Not a bad read, but not an essential title either. I'd give it 2.5 out of 5. This title actually had a sequel called AI Busters 2, but ironically it isn't just a continuation, but a collection of short stories involving characters involved in the first AI Busters and those in The Legend of the Twilight. This is one of the few which you need to have read something else to understand what's going on. Again, it's not badly done, but no real importance, and just backstory. Only recommended if you've read both of the titles mentioned. 2 out of 5 stars. After this, the events of Dot Hack Sam begins, an anime which revolves around the player Tsukasa, who can't seem to log out of the game, and begins to possess strange abilities unavailable to normal characters. Soon, other players around him begin to notice this, 
and they become involved with his problem. Some try to help him get out of the danger that he's gotten himself into, and others have alternative motives for their helping. To start things off, the animation's okay here. While there's not much to say, the designs keep true to the art style of the games and are a good adaptation. Music, I have mixed feelings about. Just a personal opinion, but some I don't like. And personally, I think there's too many sung lyric pieces. I want to listen to the characters speaking, not the music. It's a bit disappointing that considering the setting of a fantasy based world, there are many action scenes which I think would have been cool to see, you know, some of the characters flying around like in a Naruto or Bleach episode. Instead, the story draws you in with trying to work out the mystery beh behind Tsukasa's problem and the character himself. It suffers a bit from changing focus of the characters and confuses you as in what's important and what you should be paying attention to, resulting in some episodes which just seem completely pointless to the plot. It's only near the end, after a bit of exposition, and everything starts to fall into place, which I think it risks alienating people with the poor start. One thing it did do well, like I think of the franchise in general, I enjoy the focus on the individual characters, which branches out into their personal life, and it makes them less two-dimensional characters, even if they are supporting the main lead. Considering it's a prequel to the main story, it does a good job of not only setting up events and introducing important points, it still manages to stand out as its own story, which ra wraps up well at the end and moves to the next one. A title a little rough around the edges, if you stick with it, you'll appreciate it. I'll give it 3 out of 5. After this series ends, comes the big one. The title which all the other stories branch off for the first generation, and the one that started the franchise. It was a series of 4 PlayStation 2 games which was simply titled Dot .hack. Also, depending on which game you had, an extra word was added on. Infection, Mutation, Outbreak or Quarantine. This story is about a new player called Cat, who recently began playing the world. He happens to be friends in real life with the famous player Orca, who happily takes him into the field to learn the basics. But things go wrong, as an unidentified monster appears to be chasing a little girl in the field they're in. Orca tries to defeat the monster, but it seems all but invincible. When able to do anything, the monster uses a strange ability which takes out the legendary player in one blow. Events happen quickly as the server crashes, leaving Kat confused and concerned for his friend. It turns out his friend in real life, Yasuhiko, the person behind Orca, has gone into a coma-like state. Returning to the world to find answers, his encounter with the girl has left him with a strange bracelet, which gives him all sorts of abilities. He, te he intends to use these abilities to discover the cause of the comas, but the use of the illegal item makes him the enemy of the administrators of CC Corp and Orca's close friend Balmung who blames him for his condition. After an eventful encounter, he teams up with a player called Black Rose, who has her own reasons for helping him, and so it's up to these two to discover the mystery behind the comas and the mysterious girl's identity. Now onto the actual game. I think that considering the capabilities of the PlayStation 2, they could have done a bit better with the graphics, the subpar at best, and they look a bit tacky at times. Towns are rendered okay, but the characters look a bit wooden. While the fields are randomly generated, there's a lot of reusing of objects and landmarks. The same with monsters, but it's an, it's an RPG, so it can be expected. Music's not too impressive either. It's not bad, but once you've been in each field tab, once you've heard it all, and considering the length of the game, it can really begin to irritate you. The only music I did enjoy was during boss encounters, but most games usually are. So far, things are lo not looking too good, but surely the gameplay makes up for it, right? Let me explain. It tries to simulate the feeling of a massive multi-online RPG. It does this to most extent. It plays out as I described at the beginning, entering fields, exploring dungeons, etc. But the thing where the game failed to think about is repetitiveness. Why? Let me try let me sum up the game for you. You're in town, an event happens. Travel to the field indicated. Find the dungeon. Travel to the lowest level to activate another event, sometimes a monster fight, sometimes talking to another person. After event, return to town. Repeat.